Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to finally finish up the Nakamichi 480. This is part three, I guess. And you might be thinking to yourself, I thought you already finished that thing up. Well, not quite. I got it working, yes. I got it working well enough to listen to it play and record on it and that stuff, but it wasn't very stable, the speed on this thing. That's what we're going to look at today, is how to uh, make the capstan motor work better and possibly replace it. So, yeah. And if you're wondering where the Sony deck is for this week, I'm doing the Summer of Sony stuff every other week. So I probably forgot to mention that in my first video on the Sony series, but uh, that's the idea. Every other week I do another Sony deck or something like that or whatever. This is to give myself time to uh, allow the fancy special idler tires to come in for these things. I've only got two of them and I've and I uh, need four of them. Actually, I need three of them. Either way, I I need some stuff to come in yet before I can finish up the uh, summer of Sony stuff. And just one other little announcement. After working on that Bose unit last week, I did something real crazy. I bought one kind of like that, but kind of not. You see, there are some Bose acoustic wave systems that we never got in the U.S. or Canada, strangely enough. And I got curious about them, and I wanted to try one out, so I just ordered one up this morning. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, first, we need to get into this, and we need to diagnose the uh, capstan motor before we do anything else. So we'll get the cover off first. I'm going to try to do this without... Uh, taking the transport out because that's a bear on these things. Let's see, can I access all the screws for the uh, capstan motor thing? I should be able to. There's one that's going to be tricky, but uh, that's fine. But yeah, the first thing we want to do is find out what's wrong with this. We need to eliminate the uh, control circuit from the equation here, so I'm going to pop this off and uh, probably plug it in and get the uh, speed calibration stuff fired up and uh, WFGUI and all that stuff. And, uh, and we're going to hit the controller with some cold spray and see if that changes the behavior. First, we got to pop the back off, of course. Yeah, I don't feel like doing a... Uh, a motor rebuild just now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this motor out and swap a new one in. That's what's going to happen. Let me shut off the Z50 here. And we'll talk about the new motor that's going in. Which is this one here. Whoops, went too wide angle. This is the original motor from the... Uh, JVC TDX501 auto reverse deck. I decided to part it out because I decided I couldn't trust it anymore. So uh, why keep it around? So uh, yeah, this one is going into the Nakamichi right now. So it, it at least will have a, a, a decent motor in it, I hope. Until such time as I decide to get in here and... Crap, that's the real motor. I took the back off the real motor. I didn't test the capstan motor. Dang it. All right, let's try this again, this time with the right motor. I gotta say, these things are terrible to get into. But I'm in, so we're gonna find out what's what in a second here, I hope. I gotta plug this thing back in, because I wasn't gonna fiddle around with the guts while power was applied. Now get the test tape back out, and we'll see what do. I can hear that thing from here. It's not particularly quiet, and we're starting out terribly over on the uh, wow and flutter side of things. Well, not terribly with the wow and flutter. It's 0 0.06 now, which is better than it was back when we were monkeying around with this motor. 
It's down to 29.80. Let's see what cooling it off will do for it, if anything. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. Instant change. It's running 28.45 now. Okay, yeah, the controller's no good on that, I'm thinking. So, yeah. Basically, the end result is the same. We're going to have to change that motor. Or I'm going to have to change that motor. As soon as I figure out what buttons I'm pushing here. So, let's go ahead and change that motor with the uh, one from the TDX501, and we'll see if we can get this to uh, stabilize the machine. Okay, I've got all the screws out but one. We'll do this last one on camera. It's the, uh, the weird one that's longer than the rest of them. And we are going to have to check and see what the polarity of these wires are as well. Can't really do that from here. i got to get the... Uh, The stuff out of the thing first, if you know what I mean. Okay, screw is out. I will unhook the belt from up top here. Which of course fell off. But we're good. At least we should be good. It's going to be fun putting that belt back on, but whatever. It is what it is. Okay, now we got to take this motor off. And I do have this unplugged, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay, let's see if we can get this motor off the uh, back plate here. There's not a lot of flexibility with this wiring here, so why don't I bring you around over here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll just do a little reach around. I hope the shaft diameter of this thing is the same as the one that's going in, because I want to reuse that uh, brass pulley. So yeah, I was hoping to bring this motor back around, but it appears that uh, the controller itself is no good, so... Good to get a new one in there, even if it's not original from the Knack factory. Just rescue that screw there, and we can get this motor out. Okay, I'm just taking a look at this. I don't know if I can really easily test. Which is positive and negative this way. So how about I just clip those off. Right down here. And we'll briefly... Well, first we'll strip the wires. And then we'll briefly fire this thing up. And we'll see if we can get a positive or negative off these uh, wires. Because they're going right to the new motor anyway, so that's the idea. Okay, if I'm right, this one with the red stripe should be positive. So I'm going to hook the negative up to the one that doesn't have that stripe. We'll put this up here first so we can actually see what we're getting. And I'll hook up the, the positive. And we will plug the machine in.
Okay, now watch the meter. It should briefly fire the motor leads when I power it up. And it did. I think we had positive 13 volts. Let me hit play and then we'll find out. Yeah, that's exactly the deal. So, easy peasy. We just gotta solder this wire to the positive of the new of the new. That's what we need to do. So let me put this meter away. Or off to the side. I'm already real irritated today because Windows decided to fire up with a black screen on the laptop. That's always helpful. Okay, let's prep the new motor here. I've already got the uh, the thing removed from the thing. I got to desolder the old wires from the uh, JVC. If I can get things to cooperate for me. But yeah, the bows I've got coming in is one real interesting device. Instead of the little four and a half inch woofer that the AW1 has, this one's got a six and a half. So, should be fun to play with. Okay, that's done. Now we gotta do some hot and heavy pulley action on the old motor. You gotta get this brass pulley off here. Which is not that difficult, but irritating nonetheless. All right, so I'm going to use my feeler gauge here. Or try to anyway, see if I can find one that's... That's the right size. Okay, we'll go with that one and hope it's gonna work for us. Now we gotta fire up the hot air. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna need something to pull this off right away. Let me see if my uh, small wire cutters will do the job. They will. I've got the heater on my hot air station at number three, not that it means much, and we're just going to heat this pulley. And then just pop it off. Unless, of course, we need to heat it some more. And I'm not too worried about damaging the old motor because it's no good anyway. It's fighting real good. We've got no set screws, I hope. No, we need more heat. All right, we'll crank it up a bit more. Well, it's moving. Not well, but it's moving. Let me get a screwdriver. I wouldn't normally do it this way, but the motor shot anyway, so I don't really care that much. We need to get this pulley off. And it is moving, so. That's all we wanted to do with it. All right, finally. I'll shut the hot air off for now. I just want to make sure this... Uh... Oh yeah, it'll go on real easy. That must have been epoxied on or something.
So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, heat the epoxy or whatever they glue they used back up so I can get this to reattach. So I shut off the hot air a little too soon on that. Okay, we'll see if that does the trick. Nope, that's not seated yet. It's not holding yet, anyway. I might actually have to epoxy that on or something, or super glue it or whatever. I'll just flash freeze it and see if it'll... Nope, that won't do it. So, hmm, what can I do here? I don't want to make it impossible to get off again. Or do I? Does it really even matter? It's the right shaft size, I can tell you that right now. Let me just measure it for you. 1.8 millimeters on the old one, or on the new one. 1.8 on the old one. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run uh, super glue in there and hopefully hold it on that way. This may not be the right way to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it. Just let that set up and it should be good to go. Oh yeah, it's already ready to go. So, let's solder her in place and we'll get us a new motor real quick here. We'll do negative first. And positive second. Probably got a bunch of people yelling off the screen right now for mangling that uh, pulley the way I did, but whatever. It's my deck. I can do what I want with it. Okay, so let's see if the motor actually works now, or if this motor works. Oh yeah, it's running. We're good. So let me throw this back in the machine now. Well, actually, I can kind of do that on camera. I don't have to keep everything from you on this. I'll attach it on camera and then I'll reinstall it in the machine off camera, I think. We got to make sure that uh, there's enough wire slack to uh, allow moving the uh, plate around because I got to get the uh, belt back on it and all that good stuff. But yeah, this is a much better use of this motor than uh, Staying in that JVC piece of garbage. I can't believe how quickly I soured on JVC as a result of that unit. But maybe we'll try JVC again someday. I haven't quite written them off yet. All right, we should be good now. Let me just put this uh, whole thing back together and then we'll see what we got. Okay, folks, I think we're ready to go on this. Let's find out what we can find out. See if we can dial this in finally. I will load my test tape. 
and hit play. It's currently running at 2,911. So it needs to be upped a little bit. So I got a fancy new screwdriver here. This is one of them fancy uh, ceramic ones, but uh, let's see if we can get this to dial in. Running slow, but not for long. She's running a lot quieter. Virtually inaudible to my ears. Which doesn't count for much because my ears ain't what they used to be. 3009, we can get it closer than that, can't we? The problem is it takes so little effort just to even move the potentiometer in here. ridiculous. All right, I'm going to leave it right there. 3002, 3004, 3003, that's fine. It can be a little fast. And look at the wow and flutter. We're down to 0 0.04, actually even lower than that in some cases. Let me get this tape out and we'll try another one. This is just the Denon DRM3 tape. I'm gonna try the good tapes. Okay, let's see here. I got Technics and I got uh, Fix Your Audio. Let's try Fix Your Audio first. This one's running a little fast, but that happens. 0 0.06, and yeah, not bad. Settling in towards 3007, I'm okay with that. Like, I've got quartz lock decks that run faster than that. I've got no problem with it holding these speeds. But let's pull this one out and we'll try the Technics test tape here. The one the Technics made. This is the one I'm curious about. Little slow compared to the other two, but that's fine. I was expecting a little better while in flutter from this tape, but uh, you gotta remember, different, t different decks, the uh, the mechanisms in them resonate at a different frequency and they uh, sort of interact with each other between decks. That's why this is reading high and uh, the Denon was reading low and uh, the Fix Your Audio was kind of in the middle. And believe it or not, pipe organ builders take advantage of this uh, differing... Uh, or of these uh, differing tones and whatnot. If you've ever been to a really big pipe organ or seen a really big pipe organ that has a 32 foot resultant stop, it's taking advantage of those beats and the different frequencies. That's what that is. Basically, pipe organ builders discovered that in some installations where you can't use a 32 foot stop, they found out that if you play the low C and the low G of a 16 foot stop together, you get a resulting tone or resultant of uh, the fundamental of a 32 hertz of a 32 foot stop, which is 16 hertz, and the 16 hertz is just purely the uh, the beats that happen from uh, the uh, the low C and the low G playing together. It's not a true 32 foot stop, but it's it's close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, especially when your church doesn't have room for a uh, actual 32 footer. I'm seeing this motor might be uh, drifting down a bit, so I'm going to leave it running a little bit fast. You already saw I had to adjust it up a little ways. 
I'm going to keep watching it for a minute here. It's actually doing higher wow and flutter now than it did before on this same tape. And you'll find that when using these uh, test tapes made on consumer level machines. Like I said, there's beat frequencies between this mechanism and the machine that made the tape, so uh, they're sort of playing off each other right now. But it also could very well be that this real motor is going bye-bye. Very, very possible that's happening, especially with the uh, cam motor already needing help, and uh, obviously the uh, capstan motor was garbage. So I'm going to take this tape out, and I'm going to try to fix your audio tape one last time. Now it's running fairly fast, but like I said, 14 hertz, 15 hertz, doesn't matter. As long as we're getting relatively consistent results, and uh, this motor is clearly in better shape than the one that came out. If it weren't, I would start questioning the power supply of this thing. I only did just sort of a basic power supply capacitor upgrade here. I didn't go into the motor circuit. Could be that that is uh, something else it needs, but uh, more than likely, I'm thinking the wild flutter is the uh, is the real motor right here. But yeah, I'm happy with this. We're going to call this one a success. She's got a new motor. She's happy. She's not speeding up and slowing down the way she was. She's holding her speed now relatively, and we can call this one good. So I'll see you next week with a Sony TCK55 all. Thanks for watching. See you next time.